This is a podcast from Partnerships for Wellbeing, but you can also view it on Facebook and YouTube. Look for Partnerships for Wellbeing. Hello and welcome to the special festive edition of Ways to Wellbeing, coming to you from the winter wonderland that is Inverness and from the Santa's Grotto that is our Partnerships for Wellbeing podcast studio here in Well Street. Well, today it's a special programme, so I have not one, not two, but three guests to introduce you to, and one tiny little cameo appearance from a well-known voice. But first, let me introduce you to our first two guests, each of whom have many strings to their bows. In one case, someone with a head for tourism, another with a head for music, but both with a head for business. They are from McGregor's, Joe De Silva and Bruce McGregor. Merry Christmas. Actually feels very festive now, now that we're here in this Santa's Grotto. Now, I said you both had uh, many strings to your, your bows, um, but what kind of year has it been for you? A difficult year, if I'm perfectly honest. It's been a really hard year for a number of reasons. Um, business-wise, it's been really tough because mm-hmm. there have been so many challenges in business. Um, there's been a shortage of staff and um, all the increases in prices that everybody's seen across the board, whether it's business or home. Um, And then on a personal level, we've lost some really close friends as well. So it has been a really, really, really tough year. But I think for us, we just, I suppose it brings into really sharp focus the things that are incredibly important. It really rocked us. Um, And the business, all of a sudden, business, all the worries of business just didn't matter Mm. at all. Uh, But I think we're beginning to... Yeah, I was just looking forward to getting this year done. But then you start looking back over the year and you think, God, there were some really good bits. And musically, we've been, I think we've been really lucky with Blazing Fiddles. Uh, we had our first St Andrew's Night gig at the Usher Hall, which was absolutely yeah. packed. Um, we got in, put a new album out at the beginning of the year. So musically, there was a lot of good things. Blazing and Bewley, it was back to the normal amounts after the last few years of, you know, last year we had to have it reduced in, in scale because of uh, it's still COVID. Uh, yeah. um, restrictions on things but this year you know it was absolutely bouncing the whole of Billy was so musically that was great and I think we've got some of the new members of staff we've got in at uh, McGregor's and at working at Bob Bain have been a delight to work with as well Do you know young enthusiastic we won pub of the year that's true yeah I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah the, the Highland Tourism Awards getting that you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom when you listen to the radio a lot of time, it's sadness and stuff, but then when you start to look for the good things, there are lots and lots of good things. There are lots yeah. of good things and really, really, really good people. And I think when we were at that, the award ceremony for us, and we didn't, you know, we genuinely, there's so many amazing um, businesses and uh, bars and so on. And, you know, we're just really grateful that people choose to come to us. And we never forget that, you know, we never forget everybody has a choice, but then for our peers to have said, well, actually, what you do is really good. Yeah. You know, it was really lovely, wasn't it? And yeah, it was just kind of that was. point of thinking, you know, we're never going to not be sad, but there are lots of things to be happy for. It was also a, a very, very good <laughs> reminder <laughs> of how nuts people can be at awards settlements, <laughs> because the table beside us, who will remain un- uh, <laughs> nameless oh throughout this, were absolutely out of the game from start to finish it was right. like w- watching those rock and roll uh, halls of fame kind yes. of thing when some of the bands are completely out of control they were absolutely mm-hmm. out. in fact one of them got arrested at the end of the night <laughs> which was quite impressive <laughs> <laughs> the creme de la creme I think you called them yeah. <laughs> now is it fair to say and I hope I'm not giving too much away here that when you two first met uh, many years ago at the BBC that you didn't actually like each other that much. We did not, oh my no. goodness. Oh, 
well, the problem was, you know, there was a lot of pressure in those days. You know, people coming in and taking your job at the BBC, and it was like cat and doggy yeah. dog oh, in there. Yeah, yeah, and I was thinking, yeah, oh no, here we go. Yeah, Smart, yeah. talented, Wait, so threatened, <laughs> threatened. Yeah. Well, let's see how well you both know each other now as we play our festive edition of Perfect Partners. <laughs> This is really all about choices. Um, I've given you each a, a list and there was no conferring and all you had to do is guess which choice your partner would make. So I've got Joe's list of preferences here. So um, Bruce, turkey or a vegetarian option? That was easy. She's a vegetarian. <laughs> so that was, uh, yeah. We'll eat the odd bit of fish. But Christmas crackers or crackers with cheese? Crackers with cheese. A wee dram or a wee glass of bubbly? Bubbly. Oh, oh. choose a wee dram. Oh, really? Mm. Well, I was thinking Christmas, you know, bubbly. Secret whiskey drinker. To be quite honest, both, <laughs> I think, is the answer. <laughs> now, not for eating. Uh, reindeer or robins? I think... Robins. Yes. Skiing or skating? Skating, because I've seen her skate, but I've never seen her ski. But she might quite like the idea of going skiing. But she's got dodgy knees, and therefore skating. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> she has dodgy knees. You have, don't you? I, well, do you know, it's just an age thing. <laughs> you know, it's like everybody when you get to over fifty, you kind of wake up in the morning and go. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm afraid you chose skating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know, because I just thought to myself, again, Christmas, you know. Skating. Skating, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Eating Boxing Day leftovers or watching a championship boxing match? Uh, definitely the leftovers. <laughs> Not a big fan of the boxing. No. Ness Islands or an island in the sun? Island in the sun. Oh, she chose Ness Island. No way! You know, I was talking about going to an <laughs> yes, <I know, laughs> exotic but, you know, island. I'm thinking Christmas, I'm thinking, you know. Oh, wait a minute. Do I know what she's thinking? She's, she's thinking involved. I'm going to win this. No, she's <laughs> thinking I'm involved in the, the tourist thing. <laughs> the There's <laughs> nothing nice when I wander around the Ness Islands on a crisp Christmas morning. Okay. Ur Willy or the Bruins? I've gone for Ur Willy. For no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Not trying. Well, Jing's help model, she chose the Bruins. The Bruins, yeah. Music one now. Uh, Santa Claus is coming to town, or Santa's a Scotsman? I think Santa Claus is coming to town. <sighs> I don't think you know her at all. I don't she think chose he does. Santa's a Scotsman. I've so, never heard you play that. No, but you know why? Because that is written by Fred Harris, isn't it? It is. And Christmas or Hogmanay? I've gone for Christmas. <gasps> and you chose Hugman. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 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 was that four? <laughs> now, before we get to part two, we're going to take a break and hear from another dynamic duo about something that's happening next year. Hello, I'm Grace. And I'm Karen. And we are Those, those Funny, funny women, women in the Woods. Part of the Inverness Festival of Walking and Wheeling, which is happening in May 2023. If you want to check out any more information, just go to p4w.org.uk, which is the website. Karen and Grace there, and yes, that's all about the uh, Festival of Walking um, happening next year. Are you walkers or wheelers? I do a lot of cycling. You do? Uh, I did. I kind of took it up during the lockdown and then uh, continued it. And I've entered the ETAP this year. Oh, my goodness. Next year. Next year. Uh, for the first time. So looking forward to that. It's just a great way of getting out into the countryside. Okay, now it's a uh, moment of truth. It's uh, part two of Perfect Partners. And now, Joe. You're trying to guess what Bruce would have chosen, turkey or a vegetarian option? Turkey. Crackers or crackers with cheese? Crackers with cheese. A wee dram or a glass of bubbly? Dram. 
Yeah, he's put glass of bubbly. Oh! Reindeer or Robins? Again, not to eat. It's Robins. Correct. Skiing or skating? See, I would have gone skiing. I've got to say I would have gone skiing. He's gone skating. <laughs> the nice now. Oh! <laughs> Eating Boxing Day leftovers or watching a championship boxing match? I'll go eating lunch. That's correct. Ness Islands or an island in the sun? Ness Island. No one's going for an island in the sun. Ah! <laughs> He'll be hounded out of Inverness. He will be hounded out. Hounded out. So I'll take you up in this island just to show you the beauty. I, I know the Ness Islands <laughs> very well. Yeah, good time of year. It's like an army out there. Urwali or the Bruins? I'm going to go with the Bruins. And he's gone with the Urwali. Ah, that's so close. That music question again. Santa Claus is coming to town or Santa's a Scotsman? Given his answer to the last one, I'm going Santa Claus is coming to town. That's right. And finally, Christmas or Hogmanay? Hogmanay. He's gone with Christmas. Oh. <laughs> so he's always working at Hogmanay. <laughs> Oh, do you know, it wasn't that bad. Well, yeah, it might be about the same as me, I think, actually. <laughs> so that means we're perfectly compatible. No, I'm afraid not. I can give you the score. Um, Joe, you have scored six. Oh. And Bruce has scored four. Winner! Do you know so, what, though? I have got something to admit. I answered those questions for you. Oh. No, no, as in, I thought that I was answering that for Joe's choices. Well, I'm afraid so, <laughs> no, no doesn't excuse, matter. there's no excuse. You know, the, the judge's decision is fine. I don't think so. And if you can't read the instructions, you can't read the instructions. <laughs> no, I just, I just realised that we did that. I've done that anyway, wrong. thing is, <laughs> there are no winners, but, uh, but Joe, you won us. Oh, oh, yes. I'll, but you know, I'll share them with you. That's, very nice. That's true Thank love you. for you. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> okay, now you've been, uh, been very busy uh, at the moment because of uh, Dodgy's Dream. Do you mm -hmm. want to tell us what's happening there? Yeah, uh, we re-released the single. Um, we, we put the single together um, 2021, I think it was January, uh, I'd written the tune uh, Hogmanay. Um, didn't have a title for it and then was out doing the, the Dodgy Abe thing where people go cycling and running in, uh, in January. And I came crashing off my bike, actually, at the top uh, of Loch Ness, um, up, up in the hill up there, very icy. And I thought, what am I doing scrabbling about in the ice when I've actually got music that I could raise money for, for his yeah. charity? Yeah. The tune went into the iTunes charts at the weekend there, and uh, it was number one on Saturday. Um, and it, it's got a... It's really difficult to work out how the charts work these days. There's so yeah. many different streams of it, but you know, getting to number one in the iTunes charts was, was pretty spectacular. So it's out on Amazon now. It's on Spotify. So if we could get it into the Christmas charts, uh, that would be be wonderful. So every penny, everybody who got involved with it did it free of charge, and every penny after Spotify etc have taken their cut off it goes directly to the charity. Yeah, I know we should brought your fiddle in with us. Uh, well, it uh, just would you look at that. Would you look at that? Yeah. Uh, okay, will you uh, give us something festive? Yes, why not? I am. Um, I know a couple of festive tunes. Mm -hmm. um, not that well, but we'll give this a crack because I think it'll <gasps> perfectly complement those lovely bells you have. And I think I'll get out of your way. In case that <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, a very dangerous, <laughs> very dangerous thing. So here we go. <laughs> our career's finished. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce McGregor, Joe DeSilva, thank you very much for being our guests on Ways to Wellbeing and a very Merry Christmas to both of you. Merry thank Christmas you, to you, Jeff, as well. Great stuff there from uh, Bruce McGregor on the fiddle and he certainly put us in the festive mood. Now, still on a musical theme, and it was referred to in our conversation, um, that classic Christmas song, Santa's a Scotsman. Well, luckily enough, 
we have the man responsible for that song, um, and I believe he has a, a well-being message of his own to share, but he joins us now from Edinburgh. Richard Melvin, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. Thanks for inviting me on uh, on your show, Jeff. Now, tell us a wee bit about the, the, the song. It's, what, uh, about 16 years old now? It's been going strong. Um, what, what prompted you to enter that very crowded Christmas song market. It was just such a joy because we didn't know if anything would happen with it, but we kind of put together this lovely song which had a, a sort of nice sentiment of, you know, Santa's got, Santa will find you because he's coming home, and then a good kind of sing along a chorus. Um, and that was back in 2006, and we were lucky for a couple of reasons. One, um, it was picked up by uh, Radio 2, and Ken Bruce sort of championed it and started playing it every day. Um, and, and then the head of uh, BBC uh, Radio Scotland, or the head of radio at BBC Scotland at the time, um, decided to ban it. Um, you ban- I think it was you who banned it yeah, on yeah, Radio Scotland. I, I think we should, we should explain that one. At the time, I was that person who banned the song. And I, and I wrote about the, the story in my, in my book, The Red Light Zone, about you and I were in cahoots because we worked out that the songs that made it big in the charts were the ones that had been banned. What I wasn't expecting was for you to then go into the press and trash me about banning it. I, I don't think I said, I thought, I think I just said I was very disappointed <laughs> um, and that, that how that Ken Bruce and that, 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 that Radio 2 could get so behind it and that you were me. Mere- I think I said something that you were merely attempting to jump on a bandwagon <laughs> of publicity for yourself. I mean, the <laughs> irony of that, you know, <laughs> when I was trying to flog a song at Christmas, we, we knocked Leona Lewis from X Factor off the number one spot. Uh, but it was in the HMV digital Christmas chart and we knocked her off the number one spot for about 20 minutes, right? So it still counts, but we did that for a couple of years of printing them out and sending them out to people and all this. And then by the third year, I was like, oh, come on, let's just spend the money. So we spent a chunk of money and got like a thousand CDs professionally made. But by that point, that was when people were just buying it on iTunes and no one was really buying CDs. So I remember after buying a thousand CDs and at the end of that year, I had sort of 912 of them left. I mean, it's mainly Ken Bruce who kind of took ownership over it and it became his kind of Christmas song. And that just was where all the joy came from it really. And every year there was... Well, Richard, it's funny you should mention Ken Bruce because um, I was recently in touch with Ken and I was telling him uh, that the song is probably about 16 years old, a sweet 16, and uh, he sent me this message for you. Well, Richard, who would have guessed that Santa the Scotsman would still be going on after all these years? I can remember when I first heard it, I couldn't believe the Scotland the Brave guitar break in the middle, uh, nor less could I believe the Rachmaninoff piano concerto at the end. Brilliant work, and it'll continue for another hundred years. Well, maybe a, a year or two. Well done, Richard. Yeah. Oh, that, oh, that is lovely. That, that, that is lovely. Well, um, you, again, it comes back to the genius of uh, the Owen Parker, really, uh, the, of the musical <laughs> elements that he's talking about there. I, I, um, I hadn't actually picked up on those musical elements. What makes it quite a, quite a perfectly constructed chorus is it? Is it <laughs> Santa's a Scotsman... Um, come on, make a fuss, right? Now, if, when you think of that line, Santa Scotts would come on, make a fuss. It, it, it's like, come on, feel the noise, which is back to that, you know, come on, feel, which is yeah. with Slade, right? So come on, make a fuss. And then it goes, too many pies, not enough exercise. Of course, he's one of us. Yeah. Right? So that's where you go about too many pies, not enough exercise, you know, of course, he's one of us. But Ken Bruce did say, he, go, he said, too many pies, not enough exercise, of course, he's one of us. He goes, might be one of the greatest rhyming couplets in pop history. Yeah. Now, yeah. the next year, we got T-shirts printed with it on the front of the T-shirts, and then Ken Bruce, greatest rhyming couplet in pop history. So... Uh, And we performed it at the Stand Comedy Club in Edinburgh, and Dave sang his heart out, and I handed out blow-up guitars to everyone in the audience 
And um, it was, it, I think that's the one and only time we've ever performed in live. But if anybody wants us to come and do it for them, we were, it, was, it was one of the best three minutes, 40 seconds of my life. As you say, as, as it has a very strong well-being message at its heart uh, about um, getting exercise. What's your own approach to uh, staying in staying in shape, uh, Richard? For me, I kind of think I need to, in some sense, have a project or have a sense of being like a hero. I think you know, or like having some sort of pe- you, you know, that's just how my brain works. I need to be able to you know, run 5k faster than I did last time or sort of, you know, walk further than I did before, have some sort of target. So I need, I need that for me. And, and like last year I did a thing where I was like, right, I'm going to climb. I live, um, I found worked out that from my front door to the top of Blackford Hill in Edinburgh back to my front door was almost exactly five kilometers. So I thought what I'll do is I'll try and climb Blackford Hill every day. You know, that's I'll walk every out the front day. door. Yeah. Uh, that was the plan. But then yeah. I, I didn't quite manage it every day. But I thought, right, uh, when I realized that, so what I did was I thought, well, I'll make a film of me doing it uh, with the times and all of this. And then I can, and, and then at the end of the film, I'll be, let's see if I can climb it 20 times, you know. Day one, top of Black So I did that and I made a little film of me climbing the hill. And that made me feel brilliant. I mean, not just the fresh air, not just the walking, not just the headspace. You know, after doing it a few times on my own and I wasn't so hugely out of breath and, you know, sweating, I then started to ask people to come with me. So I would then kind of go up the hill with somebody and have a chat with them and and sort of sit at the top of the hill. And I was timing it, but I gave myself the opportunity when I got to Top Hill to pause my timer so um and we'd sort of sit and have a chat and that was really good so things like that i I found got great a great deal of you know benefit from you know just the headspace but also the fact of starting to do it with other people you know yeah um was quite good well richard um you are a hero having uh, contributed this um, great song in into the, the zeitgeist, as it were. And with, with your permission, we're going to play it, play out with it. And I should remind you, uh, anyone who's um, doing a bit of last minute Christmas shopping that if you'd like a rare collector's CD edition of Santa's a Scotsman, it is available at Louise Innes' One of a Kind Gallery in the Eastgate Centre. And by the way, you can get a book uh, at the same time. So think of it that way. You're buying the CD and you get a free book. Okay, Richard, thank you very much. And I hope you have a terrific Christmas uh, and uh, a brilliant new year. And I hope to see you very soon. Thanks, Jeff. Total pleasure talking to you. Well, that's about it from this festive edition of Ways to Wellbeing. I just wanted to show you these pictures. Uh, It's our volunteer drivers, uh, almost 40 of them, uh, enjoying a recent uh, Christmas uh, dinner and well-earned, I I should say. And if you are interested in becoming one of our volunteer drivers or walk leaders or board members um, and you fancy, you know, doing something different uh, next year, well, make it a resolution and uh, give us a call or go on our website at p4w.org.uk or uh, if you want to be a, a volunteer driver, give Fiona McInnes, uh, our transport manager, a call. Uh, Here's a picture of her dressed as an elf at a recent uh, Rotary Club event in Inverness. Uh, Actually, I think she always dresses like that. Anyway, that's it from Partnerships for Wellbeing uh, for 2022. We'd really like to take this opportunity to thank all our volunteers, all our funders, all our supporters, everyone who's helped our wee charity over the past 12 months. And may we sincerely wish you all the very best for 2023. Bye for now. It's Christmas time in Scotland and my kid said to me just one question daddy before I go to sleep how will Santa find me so I said wherever he may roam Santa will find you because he's coming home
Pathways to Wellbeing is produced in Inverness, Scotland by Partnerships for Wellbeing, a registered charity. To find out more about our services, go to p4w.org.uk.